Today, I want to um, break down what seasons are, um, the intersections of change that often bring us into new seasons, the importance of our choices at the intersections of change, and the benefits of embracing, of embracing change with an, a good attitude. A season can be described as a chronological sequential span of time. It is where we get the word chronos from. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. It is time. It includes all of time. It can be from morning to noon, morning to evening. It is time that we count and that we watch our clocks by. But then there are due seasons and set times and appointed times with the Lord. And these are called Kairos moments, divine appointments when heaven presents opportunities to help advance our, to help advance the fulfillment of our portion of God's purpose and plan in the earth realm. And so these are what Paul says when he talks about redeeming the time, he's not talking about chronos. He's talking about Kairos moments, redeeming the opportunities that God sets before us. And it's at these moments when we're at the intersection of change, when the divine opportunities are set before for us, that the choices that we make matter most because they have the power to change the trajectory of our lives. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the sun. Ecclesiastes 9, 11 says, I returned and saw that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance, beloved, happen to us all. And this is the same word. This word for time is the same word that is used for the chronological span of time. In the Hebrew, it is the word yom. Psalm 31, 15 says, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemy and from those who persecute me. And so here he is saying that his chronological time, his seasons of time are in the Lord's hand. But not only are his seasons in the Lord's hands, but also the appointed times, his due seasons, his times to be delivered out of one season and set into a new season are in the Lord's hand. Every season, no matter how long, no matter how hard, no matter how fruitful or blessed is in the hands of the Lord. And it has a beginning and an ending with its own beauty blessings and its own purpose and lessons. And then there's this word chance. And chance is a word that implies change. It is a word that means an occurrence. It means that something that it's something that occurs that has the power to change the trajectory of our lives. It's something that occurs that brings change. It's an event, expected or unexpected, that changes the course of your life. It is those things good or bad, that happens suddenly, seemingly suddenly, that you may or may not have been expecting, but that God already knew about, that has the power to change your life. And it doesn't mean that when bad things happen or things that we didn't plan, that God is some type of way uh, that God is against us or that it's his fault. But he certainly does work all things together for his good. And sometimes he does induce things that we would consider bad. He does allow things that we would consider bad to happen for the greater good and advancement of his purpose and plan. Just like Joseph, when he went into Egypt, he did not believe probably that that was good, but God was using it to bring people into Egypt that they wouldn't starve, that Joseph would keep his siblings alive because God had a plan for them. And not only that, it was his way of getting them into Egypt where he had promised Abraham that he would bring his 
descendants into a foreign land. And so God uses things and sometimes we don't understand it. These moments are what I like to call the divine intersections of life. Divine because it's an opportunity from God, a Kairos moment where you get to choose which path you'll take. And sometimes those choices are made for you. Joseph didn't choose to go into Egypt. And sometimes we don't choose change. Change can be losing a job, taking a new role in a job or ministry. It can be leaving a church, leaving a city, ending a relationship. It can be having children or grown children leaving your house. It can be becoming an, and becoming an empty nester like me. It can be sickness or health issues. It can be financial issues, but change doesn't always have to be bad. It can be good. It can be a promotion or finding a new job or a new relationship or joining a new church home. It can be getting your dream job or starting the business that you always dreamt of. It can be moving to a beautiful city. Change happens, but the problem that many people face, as I said with Joseph, is that most people resist the change that they did not choose. The problem with that is that when we reject change that we cannot control or stop, oftentimes decisions are made for us and we don't get a say in the matter. When we, when we choose to embrace change, when we choose to embrace change, then we can at least get God's perspective on it and go into it with a better attitude, even if we did not choose it. Because no one escapes time and chance, it is best to learn to embrace your seasons of change. To embrace something is an act of accepting and supporting something willingly and enthusiastically. When you embrace change, you have an opportunity to lean in with God and choose not only the best path for you that you would see, but the right path that God has ordained for you, that will lead you into the fulfillment of your purpose and destiny. When you embrace change, it is choosing faith over fear. And when you choose faith over fear, you enter into God's rest. I want to share a story, even though I touched on Joseph from the book of Ruth. I want to touch on her story because it offers us not one, but three examples of what happens when we're at the intersection of change and the choices that we make and where it takes us. Ruth, Naomi, and Oprah were widowed women. Naomi her husbands and her sons had gone to Bethlehem from Moab when there was a famine in Bethlehem. And this was many years prior to the time that the story actually started. But what happened was that her husband died. And then some years later, her sons got married. And after her sons got married, about 10 years later, both of her sons died. And they left her with no children and no one to take care of her in the land of Naomi and in the land of Bethlehem. And Naomi found herself in an expired season. She found herself um, dab, dab smack in the middle of change that she didn't choose, that was thrust upon her yet again. Not only did her husband die, but here it was. Her sons had died. Sometimes we choose change. We plan it, as I said, and other times change is thrust upon us because of other people's decisions, because of the li because of life events, because of things we cannot control. So there she was at the intersection of change, and she could have chosen to stay in Moab with her daughters-in-law. But the word says that she heard that the famine was over and that the Lord had provided bread for his people in Bethlehem. Him. And at the intersection of change, in that moment, Naomi chose to return to her people. She chose to go back to her homeland. It was a familiar place, but because there had been so many years since she had been home, it was still a place with a lot of unknowns but she was willing to embrace change. She chose not to stay where her husband and her sons were buried, but to go back to her land and face the unknowns, face the fact that she had left full 
with a husband and children and all the things that a woman's heart could desire or that anybody's heart could desire, a family, children, material things. But she was coming back empty with nothing. When Naomi made it back home, the Bible says that the women said to her, it is Naomi. But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord has brought me home empty again. She, in fact, was a woman who embraced change regardless of the shame, even though she felt the Lord had dealt her a bitter hand in life and she didn't yet understand that it wasn't him, but the time and chance that happens to us all, nor had she yet seen how he was gonna make it work for her good. She was willing to trust the Lord and face off whatever came as she went back home. And then there were her daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Oprah who were supposed to go with her. But Naomi was being kind and told them to go back to their mothers where they could find rest in the house of a husband. This was the rest that the world can, can provide, a place of shelter and safety, which is a good thing. They said they didn't wanna go back though, but she reasoned with them. She said, turn back my daughters. Will you, why would you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb? that they may be your husbands. Turn back, my daughters, for I am too old to have a husband. And if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should bear sons, would you wait for them to grow to, until they are grown? Would you restrain yourself from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And in that moment, Oprah considered her choices. Not good. Going with Naomi back to Bethlehem means no husband. I'm going to die a widow and all these things. And so in that moment, she chose to go back to her gods, her family, her place, her people, her place of comfort, her familiarity, her ease. And I imagine that Oprah found rest in the house of a husband. But just like the Lord's peace that the world doesn't give and it can't take away. He said, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. His rest is also different. The world doesn't give it and the world can't take it away. And it, it cannot be compared. And so I wonder what it cost her to find rest in a place of idols and ease. Sometimes we can promise for rest. We choose the easier path or we stay stuck in an old place, an expired season and refuse to step into the new because it's easier, because um, it's comfortable, because it's familiar, because it's not hard. Even though it might limit how God can fulfill his callings and purposes in our lives. After her decision to go back, we never hear about Oprah again. Her story ends with her choice to stay in an expired season instead of embracing change. But Ruth refused to go back. Ruth said, do not ask me to leave you or turn back from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so more, do so to me and more, if anything but death parts me and you. And the next verse, Ruth 1.18 says, When Naomi heard that she was determined to go with her, she left from speaking to her. She stopped trying to get her to turn back. And so the word used determined that Ruth was determined to go with Naomi. It means courageous. It means to be steadfast. Ruth steadfastly 
in her faith, we choose to go back, to take no for an answer. And it was at that divine intersection that she chose, when she chose faith over fear, when she chose the unknown over the familiar, that she stepped in, out of her comfort zone and choose to embrace change. She left the place where she could have found rest in the house of a husband. She chose to embrace a new language, a new people, a new God, a new culture, and a new land. Ruth is an example of how to walk out the work of embracing change. She made a courageous decision to go in the direction of following God, even though it was the path with it was a path with many unknowns. She embraced her season of change with open hands and open heart and an open mind. She went into her new season with willing to learn as I said, a new language, a new culture, new customs, new ways of doing things, and to have a new relationship with a new God. She knew of God through her mother-in-law, but she was embracing him as her God. And so that was new. And so she had to hold, have an open mind to do that. And then she had open home, open hands to let go of her parents' home, to let go of the opportunities in her homeland. And that would have been easy for her in order that she could move forward. She looked also, she looked for work and she was willing to do the work in a hard season to provide for herself and her mother-in-law to advance their lives in this new season. She had open hands to do what was necessary, to work willing with her hand, willingly with her hands. But she also gave of her sustenance to Ruth. She didn't keep what she gleaned in Boaz's fields during the har harvest for herself and eat it all for herself. But whatever she received, whatever she gleaned, she saved some for her mother-in-law. She had an open heart to trust in her mother-in-law's wisdom and guidance in this new season to go to Boaz and present to him the fact that he could redeem them in mar by marrying her. And she could have chosen to wait for a younger man, but she had an open heart to go with Boaz, who was a man who from the outside was older than her and so not a right fit for her. Even though she was a Moabitess woman, she had a good reputation for being a decent and kind daughter-in-law to her mother-in-law. And she was a giving person. And so Boaz noticed that even though she could have waited for another young man and it may not have been hard for her to find someone or for someone to find her, she obeyed her mother-in-law and gave him a chance in love. Ruth was... Also, this is her open heart, a friend, as I said, to her mother-in-law, which ignited as she encouraged Naomi in her hard season when she felt the Lord had dealt bitterly with her. It ignited something in Naomi to begin to think of how she could bless Ruth. And this is where she came up with the idea to, uh, with the plan to send Ruth to Boaz to um, secure a place of rest for her. So this is what she did. And so in them blessing each other, because Ruth had an open heart, um, the Lord blessed them both. And so when Ruth chose faith over fear, she entered God's rest. The fact that she chose faith faith over fear allowed her to go in and not only embrace change, but embrace change with the right attitude, having an open mind, open hands, and an open heart. Hebrew 4, 3. Hebrews 4, 3 says, those who have believed do enter the rest of God. Whereas Oprah Orpa <laughs> went back to Moab and probably did remarry and find rest in the house of her husband. The Bible doesn't say because her story ended. Ruth did the hard things in a hard season, but because of her faith, she entered into God's rest, which is his covering. And God provided for her and took care of her. Boaz said, the Lord repay your work and fully and a full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. So when she entered into 
when she chose faith over fear, she entered into God's rest and came under his covering and she didn't have to worry anymore. She allowed God to direct her path and she kept an open mind and open heart and open hands in the process because she put her life in God's hands and choosing to trust him, trust him, he provided for her. And because of this, she was able to experience the fulfillment of his purpose and plan. And along the way, uh, as she embraced change, she also got to experience the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons that God had for her. The beauty is that she found rest in the house of her husband. Not only did she find God's rest, but she found a place of rest, a physical place where she could be. And she also found a husband that would love her. The blessing is that she was able to have a child when she had committed to maybe never even marrying again. She had a child and she was able to take care of her mother-in-law. And not only was her husband a, 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 a provider and a redeemer, but he loved her. And so she had a place of safety. And then there was the purpose that she was a part of the genealogy of King David and Jesus Christ, our Lord. God used her and that season to work out. God used that season of her life to work out her part in his purpose and plan. He made all things work together for her good because she loved him. And she was called according to his purposes, even though she did not know it. Even though she did not know that she was a part of his plan, she was. And God worked his purpose and his plan in her life because she chose to embrace change. Then finally, the lessons. She learned about God's faithfulness and how to trust him even in the hard seasons and how he comes through for us when we choose rest over worry. And that's what the Lord wants to do for you. He wants you to experience the benefits of embracing change and choosing rest over worry. When you choose to act in faith over fear, you enter God's rest. And when you embrace your seasons of change with open hands and open mind and an open heart, you will experience the Kairos moments, the divine appointments that God has for you to fulfill your his purpose and plan in your life. And also to experience the beauty, the blessings, the purpose and the lessons that he has ordained for you in each season of your life. Let's talk about open hands. We talked about what Ruth experienced and how she had an open hand, open heart and open mind. But how does that look in our lives? Open mind looks like being teachable and understanding that there's things that you don't know and allowing God to um, direct your path and being open from learning to learning from others and um, expecting divine appointments having the perception of God, perceiving things from his perspective, seeing things differently and allowing him to direct your path and at those intersections, at those divine intersections, letting go of the past and moving forward. Open hands looks like being willing to give as much as you get, going into a new season, willing to do the work with your hands, your time and your energy to give of those things and to be open to the people that come across your path, to have compassion towards others in a new season. You never know what God is going to do and who's watching when you decide to bless others. Who you, when you bless somebody, how God will bless you. And an open heart, be open to new relationships, not just in love, but when God sends you into a new season, he oftentimes has divine relationships and people that he wants to connect you to so that those people can bless you and open doors for you. And even when you bless other people and open doors for them, it is God. God will do return it to you. Um, as we saw Boaz said, the Lord return the favor that you've done to your mother-in-law, the goodness, the kindness that you've shown her. May the Lord re return it to you. And so Look for those things and look to restore relationships like Naomi did. I'm a witness to this. See, I saved my story for last. I just come through a long season that was 
unset by one of those unexpected changes that changed the trajectory of my life. If I'm honest, it was more than one thing. Like Naomi, it was a season of one thing after another happening. Hard things, hurtful things that I could not and I would that I would not wish on anyone else. Life after life altering things over the last seven years. At first, I was in denial. I rejected change. I resisted change because I didn't choose it. I didn't want it. Things that were happening, the suffering, the sacrifice, the suddenly felt like life was just suck, sucker punching me, uh, hitting me with blow, one blow after the other, after the other, after the other. And then I came to that moment, just like Naomi, where one final thing happened. And I remember it. It was my mother passing away. It was kind of expected, but still unwanted. And I began to look at change differently. And I stopped asking God why things were happening in my life. And I started asking him what he was doing in these things. I stopped resisting change. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace this season of change. It's not that I like it. It's not that I'm happy about it, but I know that you make all things work together for the good of those that love you and are the called according to your purpose. And I know that I qualify for that. And so I'm going to embrace it. And when I did, it changed my perspective. See, I have been asking the wrong questions, looking at things from the wrong perspective. But when I started to, um, when I decided to embrace change, I started asking the right questions. And then I realized that the best way to get through this season was to just truly embrace where I was and look for the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons that God had ordained for me. And when I did do that, I began to experience what was a very difficult season with no end in sight back in 2018 from a place of rest. And that's when I began to capture the beauty, the blessings and the purpose and the lessons that God had ordained for me. And I remember the Lord giving me this promise probably at the end of 2019. But he reminded me of it again toward the end of 2021 or the middle of 2021. And it is from Psalm 66. And it says, for you, O Lord, God have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the flood, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. And that word means a rich, a place of rich fulfillment and satisfaction. And as I said earlier, every season has a beginning and an ending with its own beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons. And I finally began to see a way out in choosing change and choosing to embrace change with the right attitude. It opened the Lord for it opened the door for the Lord to bring me out of a long and difficult season of suffering, sacrifice, and all losing all the things, um, the marriage and all the, all the things, the hope, the the dreams. Not that I didn't have material things, but the things that really mattered to me and were important to me seemed like they were just falling through the cracks. But He brought me out of that hard season and to what I believe is the beginning of a season of rich fulfillment, of the rich fulfillment of God's purpose and plans for me. It's a new season, it's a new beginning, but I had to do the work that embracing change requires. I had to do the work to enter into God's rest. The Bible says that uh, we labor to enter into God's rest, but then those that do believe enter God's rest. See, it's an act of faith to choose rest over worry and to continue to do that. That is the work. That is the labor to continue to choose by an act of my will, even though I don't feel like it, even though it doesn't feel good to choose rest over worry, to choose faith over fear and to enter God's rest, enter belief that God is going to bring me out. And when I learned how to do that and to stay in that place of rest under his covering, God began to um, 
show me the lessons, the beauty, the blessings that he had for me. And I felt like Naomi must have felt when God turned things around for her. Psalm 126 says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Our, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said them among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Psalm 30, 11 and 12 says, you have turned my mourning into death dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and be not silent. Oh Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. That word uh, in Psalm 126 to turn back means to rebuild, to recover, to refresh, to rescue and restore. And I believe that what God did for Naomi and Ruth and what he is doing in my life in this season, he can do for you if you're going through a hard season and you choose to embrace change with an open mind and open heart and open hands. If you choose faith over fear and enter into God's rest, if you choose rest over worry. He will make what the enemy meant for evil work for your good. And you will see the goodness of the Lord in this lifetime. Five clarifying questions that helped me change my perspective. They became a part of my prayer life and they helped me get clear about what God wanted me to focus on, what I was supposed to give my time and attention to. And when I was freed up from worry and I knew what I was supposed to be focusing on and what God was calling me to do, I was able to experience the blue, the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons that God had ordained for me. And I was able to see how God was fulfilling his plan and the things that were going on. I was able to embrace change with an attitude of rest and not worry. And so beloved, I hope and pray that this has blessed you and it has given you the tools. It has encouraged you and it given you the tools to equip you to embrace and navigate your season of change. And God bless you. And you can find me anywhere at kristapetaport.com. You can find me at kristapetaport.com and anywhere online at kristapetaport. God bless you.